All right. So the floor is yours. Lots of big announcements yesterday. First off, I'd love to get some feedback uh, from y'all um, on, on the big announcements at Connect Wednesday yesterday. Floor's yours. Um, I'll start, Mr. J. So um, coming to the meeting yesterday, that was my first meeting, uh, Wednesday meeting with C21. Uh, very informative, very, very, um, a lot of information was passed. Um, I definitely see the investments that C21 is, is putting into the agents to make sure that we progress. Um, the, the actual things that they're bringing to the table as far as the, the MOXIE uh, works, as well as the, um, the other program that's supposed to communicate with each other. Uh, mm -hmm. I think, you know, me not being able to really use my CRM or didn't really use my CRM uh, at my previous brokerage, I think that this one is a great start for me, uh, yeah. considering I'm kind of new to real estate. You know, I don't have a, a real big following. Uh, I think that this would be a great time to kind of start fresh and get in there and, and have so many different tools available um, to touch the bases. But I, I, I'm excited for the changes that are coming. Awesome. Me too. Me too. Anybody else want to chime in? Actually, I have a quick question. Oh, wait a minute. Look up, Taz, go first. I just had a quick comment. I am yeah. um, pretty excited about the new CRM, and I actually want to see if we actually do put Zillow out of business. I want to see how this goes. So, um, Couldn't agree with you more. I'm excited to see it. That's all I have. <laughs> okay. Lacey, go ahead. Yep. So I have a, just kind of a technical question. I know that Real Scout will... Um, feed into Moxie, but will Moxie feed Real Scout as well? So are they going to talk both ways? Very good question. And the short answer is I, I'm not 100% certain yet. We're still in the process of rolling both of them out. Usually when there's an API in one direction, there's also an API in the other direction. Um, but I don't know that 100% yet. Okay, but we will find out pretty quickly. <laughs> okay, thanks. All right. So doesn't even have to be dealing with the same stuff that we talked about yesterday. By the way, there's another new person on here, Corey. Corey, I didn't, you don't have your camera on, so I didn't see you and I just glossed over your name, but Corey needs to do an introduction too. Corey, can you turn your camera on and, and, and introduce yourself to All us right. or... Absolutely. I'm, I'm in the car, but I can. <laughs> Hi, well, everybody. Be safe. Uh, <laughs> yes. Well, you know what? Actually, I'm in the position I can pull over really quickly. But okay. Hi, everybody. I am Corey. I just completed my first year in real estate. I also came from Keller Williams, um, Tucker. I uh, had a little bit of success my first year. I'm looking forward to doubling my numbers. <laughs> um, that's pretty much it. Okay. I'm glad awesome. we have 2021. Definitely a change, too. <laughs> Good. Okay. Well, we're excited to have you guys here. Um, and and let me just kind of introduce to you guys. I mean, we're all part of, uh, part of you know, uh, there's, what, 140 agents in this brokerage. Um, but, the, but the 12, 15 of us that are on this call right now, um, uh, you know, we need to take care of each other. So we need to look out for each other, watch out for each other, um, check in on your on your peers every now and then. They'll check in on you, band of brothers, y'all. And and even within our group of 140, there should be about 50 or 60 um, new licensees that are watching out for each other and taking care of each other too. All right. So I want y'all to have that that sense of pride of ownership of everything. All right. So. Um, what, what other challenges are you seeing in the marketplace right now? Is anybody having any difficulty with, uh, with client objections? Is anybody having any systems difficulties? Um, stump me, give me your questions before I launch into something totally off the wall. Julie, you were having some challenges with your um, uh, price objections on your listing, were you not? I was just thinking about that. I'm, <laughs> maybe I should talk about my listing. So um, basically... Some, some of the folks on this call have probably done open houses at your listing. 
they have, and I, they have done an excellent job. I really appreciate that. Um, that listing is still on the market. One of the objections I have is that, or that I'm getting from my seller is that she cannot go below what we have it listed now. We've already done one price reduction and I have not had any showings in the last or any requests for showings in the last two weeks. So I'm a little concerned. We had really good momentum coming out the gate when it was first listed, mm -hmm. but now it's kind of like, and I, I think it's a reaction to possibly maybe the interest rates going up, but at any rate, we just have not had any activity. So I have scheduled a call with her tomorrow to discuss uh, some strategies going forward. She's also using the Knox Swamp program, which means that we need to go ahead and get her in the house that she's going to buy and then quickly sell her house. I mean, she's got six months, but I just don't want to see it go to the length of that um, so that we can hurry up and get it sold quickly. So yeah. we're probably going to let it expire and then refresh the listing and, and start over. That's basically all we can do. But, but that's the challenge. That's probably one of the bigger ones that I'm dealing with right now. I did want to comment, though, about the announcement yesterday. Yeah. I was waiting for you to chime in. I'm super excited about Real Scout. I used it at my previous brokerage. I loved it. I think uh, as an agent, it's so agent friendly. So uh, when it comes, guys, you know, just if you have any questions, I'm here to help. But I, I loved it because it made it the integrations and it made communicating with my clients and helping them uh, so much better than just with regular FMLS. Uh, it just made my life a lot easier and helped yeah. me to sell better. So I just, that's why I wanted to throw that in. Couldn't, couldn't agree with you more. Um, you know, the, the buzzword for yesterday was adoption. Um, and to be honest with you, early adoption. Um, and the statistics for Moxie that, that they're touting and that, frankly, not only they're touting, but uh, other Century 21 offices are, are touting um, is that, that your production, your, um, your volume of business will increase by f over 41%. And those are using numbers from 2020. It's now 2022. So I, I know they've gone up since then because they've even improved the product since then. Um, so it is going to be a game changer for Moxie and when you add Real Scout to it and you add um, the flexibility of, um, of that, that our increased um, email capabilities are going to give us also, um, your engagement in the CRM, everything is going to become significantly easier and better for us. Okay, uh, somebody, we're going to have to mute somebody. And, uh, <laughs> All right. Um, so what I would love to do now, um, we've got some time. Um, I've got a little eight minute video, uh, maybe nine minutes um, uh, on uh, on Moxie Engage, which does everybody remember the four parts of, of Moxie that you, we, are, we are going to receive? Okay, we're going to get Moxie Present, which is a presentation tool for CMAs, um, also for buyers and, and showing tours and, um, and open houses. Okay, so that's Moxie Present. Moxie Engage is your CRM. It's the replacement for Zap and, um, and Business Builder. Okay, Moxie Impress is your email marketing tool. What I love about this is everybody, as soon as you get a listing, as soon as you get a buyer under contract, everybody's scrambling to go to Canva to try to figure out how to make their templates for their social media posts and all that kind of stuff. Moxie Impress does it all for you. Gives you shareable links to, to where you can take that link, go straight to your, um, your social media and post it. Okay, so that's Moxie Impress. Moxie Engage, Moxie Present. The fourth one is the Moxie Websites, okay? And that is replacing your Zap website as well as your C21 Business Builder website and C21 site, okay? 
highly customizable on all of those. But Moxie Engage is really where the majority of your time and effort should be spent. Okay. And and it's going to take the most effort and energy to get it set up. So we're going to kind of dive into that and preemptively learn a little bit more about it. So this is introductory. You don't need to be taking um, notes to the point of, I need to know what the steps are because y- you'll, you'll get that when the time comes, okay? So um, any questions about anything in, uh, at this point before, we, before I start playing the video? Okay. All right. Is the audio okay, everybody? Nope. I don't have audio? I don't hear anything except for you. Hmm. That's interesting. Still no audio? No. Well, that kind of throws a wrench into my works. <laughs> hmm. Let me try something different. You don't have to turn off your your actual voice speaker and play through your computer. Well, I can try like, that. Yeah, you can only play one at a time. Nope. Stand by for just a second, folks. Okay, folks, I'm going to try one more thing real quick. Bear with me. Now, is there audio? <laughs> well, there goes that idea, Jay. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm punting. <laughs> All right, so I can't play the video that I wanted to play. Um, but, so that means you guys got to come up with more questions for me. <laughs> okay, I have a question, Jay. Let's go, Taz. Um, what we discussed the other day, it worked out. Yes. I, I rocked it yesterday, and, and I, it's going to change now. Sweet. But I'm looking ahead, and I'm hoping this doesn't even become an issue, but um, say it does expire. Can you give okay. us tips on how to have the conversation to renew it? Because some people want to and some people might not want to. How do you have the conversation with the, the client? Okay. Um, so to give to give the rest of you guys some some insight into Taz, what Taz is talking about. Taz's experience, um, she's got a listing, her first one, and it's very similar to uh, to Julie Jenkins' uh, issue, was probably a little, a little priced high uh, initially, um, trying to test the market, and now the clients are are getting back into reality. Um, for both for the benefit of both Julie and Taz, I want to cover one thing before I answer her question, um, is if a home is priced appropriate, these are the metrics that we should be shooting for. Taz, you want to tell them what they, what they are? I will try. So for every 10 to 15 showings, you should have at least one offer. Okay. Um, and every three to five, sh- you should have three to five showings every week, right? 
Yes. So when you go live, and this is something that you need to talk to your clients about, and you need to set this expectation, um, is when we go live, the numbers, the metrics that we are looking for in terms of activity on your listings is we should see three to five showings per week. And for every 10 to 15 showings, we should see an offer. Okay. If we're not meeting either one of those two metrics, then the market is sending us a message about how we positioned the price of the home. Okay. There are three things that sell a home condition, location, and price. Condition and location, you can't change the location at all, <laughs> unless somebody's invented a, a helicopter that moves houses. Um, the condition you can change, you can improve the condition, but it's an, a very expensive proposition to do so. And generally speaking, it's not gonna be widely, widely acceptable. Um, I'm gonna mute some more folks. Um, the and but the price is the one thing that you can change very easily and very quickly and so what both of these ladies have experienced is they tested the market now they're going back to their clients with ammunition to say okay we tried it we have had two weeks of no showing activity um which is in clear um violation i don't know violation is the right word which is a contrary to um, our goals and objectives, and it's telling us that the market is rejecting something about the listing. So we got to look deeper and figure out what is what is the market rejecting? Are they rejecting the location, the condition, or the price? And 99 times out of 100, it's going to be the price, okay? Um, because the price is something that if the condition is not right or the location is not right, but the price is right, that's a decision factor that people will use. Okay, so to that end, um, when you when you have a situation where you've done like Julie and, and Taz have done, you've you've tried to test the market and um, and get them the client the best possible deal, but it ends up being too high. You may have wasted some time on the market, and you might have an expiration looming. Okay, so it's better to have those conversations early and often. Talk to them about what their expectations are. Talk to your client about wanting to uh, continue and your level of commitment to making sure that, that they're there. Make sure you point out to them the efforts in a summation type factor of what you've done for them up until this point. They need to understand that you've, okay, so here's the, here's the layout. We went on the market at this price. We reduced three weeks later. Um, we had X number of showings during this time frame. We had X number of showings during, you know, the after the price reduction. Um, we're still not meeting the metrics that we talked about at the beginning because we've had 30 showings and no offers. Um, so um, that's just an indicator of how much demand there is in the marketplace that you've had 30 showings. It's, it's also an indicator that if you haven't had an offer in 30 showings, that it's a rejection of the price. Okay, the market is sending us a message and we need to listen and listen carefully. So your, your, the, your goal is to ideally not have it expire. Um, because an expired listing is perceived to be a negative in, in the marketplace right now. Um, it's also um, makes your client's home susceptible to poachers and, and others that are going to call upon them if it goes expired. Okay, so I would ideally like to attempt to not get it and not have it expired and do an extension of the, the listing agreement. Okay. Who knows what document or how you would go about extending the listing? Anybody want to guess? Well, yesterday, uh, or not yesterday, I forget what day, Dwayne said, we can simply get an email, right? So we don't have to have a document. So with a, con a confirmation of how long they're extend extending it to and to what date, right? Mm -hmm. it, you can, you absolutely can. Same thing for price reductions. Um, an email is acceptable. I, I'm a, I'm a big proponent of having something in writing and not a text, an email, because you can't necessarily bring a text to a court of law if you ever had to. Um, um, so an, an email would, would be acceptable, but you could also do an amendment 
to the listing agreement. Okay, so we're, we're all familiar with doing amendments all the time, but there is an actual document in GAR that is an amendment to the listing, to a brokerage engagement. Um, and what you can do is go in there, click a few boxes and say the brokerage amendment, uh, this amendment, the brokerage agreement is amended to extend to a new expiration date. Okay. Something else that I talked to both Taz and uh, Julie uh, about um, was potentially doing something called refreshing a listing, which is essentially where you take the listing off the market and put it immediately right back on with a new MLS number, potentially new photographs, potentially new price, potentially new marketing efforts, um, new expiration date, all of those kind of things. Um, if the home was occupied before and it's vacant now, um, those can change your, your showing availability and how, how uh, accessible the home is to get people into it for showings. Um, those can all improve your, your situation. All right. Uh, what are the questions you got? Hey, Jay, yesterday we didn't get a chance to talk about something that I wanted to talk about um, in Connect our connect okay. meeting, the, the easy buy um, program was was brought up. And I don't think I completely have my head wrapped around what that is. Can you just, just dive into that for a minute? Okay, so, I'm sorry, say that one more time, make sure I understand the question. Yesterday in Connect Wednesday, that I, would thought, I think it was called easy buy, easy buyer yes. program. Yes. Yeah, can you just, just expand on that just a little bit? I don't think sure. I completely understood it. Okay, so Easy Sell, everybody hopefully is familiar with. Okay, Easy Sell is an investor buyer for a potential listing that you have. Easy Buy is leveraging um, the other side of that, which is someone that has a property that they need to sell in order to buy something new. Okay, there are at least two or three different programs that will help somebody to either do a bridge loan or a cash offer, a cash backed offer on a second property using equity in their old property. Does that make sense? The challenge, we, we tried to do this six months to a year ago. And the challenge that we ran up against was essentially you have to do a mortgage application online and there are major federal privacy laws that affect that. Um, and we ran up against the technical issue of not being able to do that. We've, we've solved that problem through partnering with somebody who's smarter than us in the IT world to be able to do that. Um, and so now we will have an easy buy program, which is essentially a mortgage application, and we'll farm it out to multiple vendors, similar to what we do investor offers. We'll farm it out to multiple vendors like Divi, um, Home Partners of America, Ribbon Home, Knock, uh, and and provide buyer options and mortgage options um, to a client that is in a difficult position because we are problem solvers. We are, um, you know, we are their trusted advisor. So we find resources like these programs and and um, vendors that can help us to get people into new homes. Okay, does that make sense? It's easy sell, but for the buy side of the transaction, which involves mortgages and, and potential bridge loans, and that's, that's the differentiation. Okay. I should have mentioned one thing. When you do a refresh of the listing, um, anytime you withdraw a listing and put a new listing back up, there is a fee, an MLS fee that, it, that, that has to be paid. You can either pass that on to your client and you can just absorb it yourself, but there, there is a $25 fee. And if you've got it in two places, I think it's, if you've got it in Georgia MLS and FMLS, it might be 50. Is it right? Is that right, Taz? Yes. <laughs> okay, I thought so. All right. So somehow, in spite of the fact that my entire 10 minute video didn't work, I'll figure that out and we'll do that the next time. <laughs> we still occupied all the time and hopefully it was productive and useful for you. I apologize for the technical difficulties. We'll figure that out. Um, any last minute questions? 
I think I've got a couple of slots available tomorrow if anybody is is ready for a coaching session. Um, and uh, looking forward to getting you on the calendar next week too. All right. Everybody have a great week. If you need anything, you know where to find me.